Hi there, this is Daniela Wolf, and I would like to take you through my online workshop, The Encaustic Minimalist. Whether you are working in a small apartment, looking for a way to get started in encaustic without building a major home studio, looking for something you can do in an afternoon and put away for another day, or simply interested in streamlining your artistic practice, this workshop will be of interest to you. I've got three panels here, one that is raw, one that has encaustic medium on it, and one that's been worked a little bit with medium and India ink. So they have India ink stamp pads that are really cool, and this is a stamp that I made, which I'm continuing to stamp India ink on the face of this, which I will then use encaustic medium on. Okay, this is probably dry now. So I'm going to do some painting here over my stamping and it's pretty warm in the room so let's make a circle and let's see what happens. Let's do some stripes. Usually it breaks up. And it does this weird fractal thing. That's so 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 cool. I'll draw a big Ouroboros in the middle there. There you go. So this is really to be done on the very top surface of encaustic. Now you have this. Don't get rid of that because then you're going to have the negative. Always use everything as much as possible. Then I have this tool which will give me a very nice feather, a feathering, and it's leaving back what, uh, what, I, what I did before. What I did is I filled up a bottle with India ink, and I'm just going to spray it. Right onto the panel, through the stencil. Uh, India ink is pretty unpredictable, especially on encaustic surface. And we're going to wait for this to dry a little bit. So looking at these two different spray through stencils with India ink, uh, I'm thinking that we maybe are done with this one just as it is uh, when it dries, it's permanent on the surface. This one on the right could maybe use some more work and this looks great as a first layer. So this makes a beautiful background for encaustic. And what I've done is I've split this in half and I painted medium over here to show you that this is another way that you can get a beautiful background before you even apply a stencil. So I'll put my stencil down and this surface is pretty warm so I'm burnishing it. I think the stencil is called Fences and it's after one of, the, one of my art pieces called Lonely. And pick up the stencil carefully. And so I am going to start this technique over the dark. And where there are these ridges, 
the paint has nowhere to go but straight up. So it starts to build up and it's a really cool technique. The idea is to paint across those areas of the stencil that are sticking up. I found four encaustic pen tools on the market that I'm going to do a comparison test with. And the first one is the Purple Cows tool and I'm using the pen nib and I'm placing it into the encaustic paint and it's coming up by capillary action and I'm dispensing the paint right onto the wax in dot form. Uh, this is one of the brush attachments from Encausticos. This is a giant one. Uh, they make a lot of attachments and so you can see this really nice line that you can get with this. This is Fan's Clairvoyant Encaustic Medium and I'm doing some prints on here. The paper is Reeves BFK. You could use any paper you like. What's fun now is that this becomes a resist. The wax prints become a resist and where the watercolor hits the wax it also beads up and if you don't like that, you can wipe that back, but I happen to really like that. The Encaustic Minimalist coming to a patio, kitchen studio, or office cubicle to you soon. I can't stop. <laughs>